Hey guys, it's Luthien, and along with Emrys, we are Girls with Sabres. This podcast begins the three-part series on Rey's heroine's journey, where we will take her character through the entire monomyth cycle. Shout out to Max Winter, who left a wonderful comment on our Rise of the Phoenix video. I literally cry to your videos, and then I make my boyfriend watch them. We hope they are happy tears, Max. And let us know what your boyfriend thinks of the videos, unless he hates them, which would suck. As always, may the Force be with all of you, and peace, love, and Raylo. Enjoy. Guys, we are going on a heroine's journey today. If you're not familiar with the monomyth cycle, it was formulated by Joseph Campbell. He wrote a book called A Hero with a Thousand Faces, and basically his whole theory is that all stories... Um, can fit in this hero template of what makes a hero. Um, Not only do all stories follow this template, but even each individual follows this template. Our own individual stories have us go through these cycles. So you can see it as a clock. Um, And the first little circle on the clock, number 12, is the status quo. That basically means your so humdrum life, what you've been doing for years and years and years, and you're tired of it. So if we're looking at it from Ray's perspective, her status quo is her life on GQ. All Mm -hmm. of those little notches on that wall are all the days that she counted down doing the exact same thing day after day after day after day, waiting for something more. I recently watched the commentary that J.J. Abrams did and the scene where she is scrubbing down the savage parts that she just found for the day. Mm -hmm. She looks across and sees an old woman right next to her, across from her. J.J. Abrams said he used that because when Ray sees that woman she's afraid that she's going to share the same fate yes that yeah she's going, i got that completely she's going to basically stay and die on gq and i think that's a little bit of a hint right there that ray knows that no one is going to come back for her there's still that hidden voice that knows the truth about her journey mm-hmm. so a hero has to go on an adventure to prove their mettle, to prove their worth. And the first thing they have to do is the one o'clock on the clock, mm-hmm. which is call to adventure. Mm-hmm. And that's her invitation to go out and follow that path. Definitely her call to adventure was Finn finding her on Jakku. That whole thing through Nima Outpost and making their way to the Falcon. That whole that whole scene was the the call to adventure. The reason that she is called to adventure with Finn is that they now have a mission. They have to get BB yep. eight to mm-hmm. the resistance. Mm-hmm. And of course she is invested in that. BB eight is the the first thing she has trusted, the first friendship that mm-hmm. she has. And then she meets Finn right after. So there's her companion that will help her bring BB-8 to to the Resistance. You could say the call to adventure started with her finding BB-8 or hearing BB-8 over the the ridge. I guess someone could make that argument that that was the at least the catalyst to the call yeah, to adventure. Yeah, that, that's definitely... Yeah. Um, that's definitely the call to adventure. Mm -hmm. And you see that with Luke. If we're going to talk about how Luke is the the perfect reflection of the monomyth right now, Ray completely parallels. What was the call to adventure for Luke? Finding R2-D2. The droids, yeah. Who had the message from Leia to Mm -hmm. go get Obi-Wan Kenobi. Then right after that, he meets Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right after Ray goes on that adventure, sees that BB-8 needs help going to the Resistance, then she meets Han. It's the exact parallel notch on the clock. There's always this bit of resistance, too, where you see Luke going, Oh, I just wanted to go to Toss Station to pick up some power converters. And then he keeps going, Oh, I should get back to 
to Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru and yada, yada, yada. And finally, Obi-Wan's like, no, like you, you gotta, now they're deceased and you gotta come with me. There's nothing left for you here. Well, he says that himself, but with Ray, she keeps going, gotta go back to Jakku. I can only go so far. And then she goes a little bit farther. Well, I can, you know, we gotta go this far with BB-8, but once I deliver BB-8, now I gotta go back to Jakku. Um, so there's always this, this kind of tug of war with Ray. You notice it a lot more, but always that until that last push to depart, there's going to be that tug of war. She's a reluctant hero. Although yes. She the reluctant hero heard the call and she's on the mission. She still is reluctant and she's being pushed more by duty and more by friendship with the yes. eight than mm-hmm. yeah i'm the hero and yes i'm going to uh have that call for adventure and mm-hmm. that's where she and luke pretty much end <laughs> like yes luke's uh was cut off from her his family right then and there when uh, uncle owen and Ambrew died mm-hmm. ray still has that attachment to jaku so she Correct. wants to come, yes she wants to go home um, yeah where the force is going to basically give her no other choice. The the second notch on the clock is the assistance. So the older, wiser person comes to help you. For for Luke, who Luke Skywalker is very much used uh, in reference to the monomyth. When when people discuss monomyth, Star Wars is always in the conversation, and Luke Skywalker is always in the conversation because. George Lucas totally mapped out the monomyth with Luke Skywalker. Who's this older, wiser person that comes to for into us to assist him? Well, that's Obi Wan Kenobi. For Ray, it was Han. Han is the one who comes onto the Falcon and is the older, wiser person, and introduces Ray to the Force. To to Ray, the Force is, and Luke Skywalker is just a myth, and he's the one who tells her and Finn, "No, it's true. All of it is true." So Han was the the sensei. He was the Luke wizard. is the myth, yeah. but he's the wizard. He is the sensei. He is he is the one who says it's not just a myth. It is true. The third notch on the clock is departure to the special world. And I believe, and you believe, that's Takadana. Mm-hmm. Um, and even J.J. Abrams said that. That is the castle that Cinderella goes to, to meet her yep. prince. <laughs> and yep. where did uh, Ray meet her prince? <laughs> By a castle. By a castle, Takadana. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And he was the only Kinda prince. Kind of looks like Belle's castle. The only yeah. prince in that place uh, wasn't Ben. Ben's not a prince. It was yeah. one uh, Ben Solo who she met. Mm-hmm. So even before that, she hears the call of the force. Um, she hears the legacy lightsaber calling out to her. And then Maz, who is another one of her meetings with the goddess or the aid assistance of an older, wiser person, tells her that this is her quest that the mm-hmm. force is calling to her but again she rejects it and she runs away from it and mm-hmm. as she runs she runs into kylo ren the prince he bridal carries her onto his ship and through that ship she enters the special world so you have mm-hmm. in the circle in the cycle you have the first half of that circle the ordinary world and then you the second half is the special world or the other world the supernatural world so right now ray has crossed from the ordinary world to the special world or the supernatural so the fourth notch on the clock is trials so i believe that her first trial is the interrogation scene with kylo ren usually a trial is where you're all by yourself you have lost your companions. Um, it's basically each trial is to get you to become a stronger person. So once you face the crisis, you'll know how to handle it. So the interrogation was very much 
the first time that she has to admit her insecurity to another person. And that insecurity was her loneliness, the fact that she is so alone. She's um, waited for her family. She sees Han as her father figure. She wants, she sees an island and she has that destiny. She wants to go to that island. And it's the monster of her story. It's the beast of her story. Basically, the villain from her perspective, Kylo Ren, is basically seeing those visions in her. She beats him. She bests him. <laughs> she turns the tables on him. And so she wins that trial. Um, the second trial is the duel in The Force Awakens. Um, this time, she has to accept the fact that the Force has called her and that the lightsaber literally flew into her hands. So she now knows that she must best her beast. She must mm -hmm. conquer over him. But I believe that it, this is one of the trials that she failed at. I think she had success with the mind interrogation, but she failed at the duel. Now, I think she actually failed this trial because if she is to be a Jedi, a Jedi is not one that attacks with rage. A Jedi mm -hmm. is one that uses his or her saber as a deflecting tool and mm -hmm. does not actually attack and go after um, the opposition. And in the duel, she actually turns the dark side. She actually hears voices of kill him. And that's very much like Luke. When Luke faced Vader in that cave, George Lucas said that Luke failed that test. That Luke mm -hmm. failed um, that trial. So the first trial she was successful at, the trial of the mind. The second, the trial of uh, compassion and controlling herself. She loses. And you see that throughout. She has a very strong, impulsive nature where she runs and she doesn't think and she doesn't actually map out what she should and shouldn't do. And that's very understandable for someone who's lived on Jakku and is basically on a flight or fight response. Uh, I can understand why she would be impulsive, but as a Jedi, that is something that she's going to have to um, learn as she matures. The third trial mm -hmm is being rejected by her mentor or her disgruntled mm -hmm. hero. Um, and that is very important because she wants a father figure. She lost Han. Yep. Now Luke does not live up to her expectations. And especially for a girl, when you're the adolescent girl, that's something that you typically go through is that the father figures in your story, you lose your closeness with your dad when you reach adolescence because you're no longer yes. his baby girl. You're now a teenager on the brink of adulthood. What I love about Ray's character is that yes, she bonded with Leia and, but there was never this expectation with Leia. She had all this expectation with Han Solo and with Luke Skywalker the myth, you know, the, the legend. She had these super fast bonds with Han and even with Luke, even though that was a very, that was a one-sided bond until the very end. It, it was so important as far as, because there's, there's nothing wrong with looking at a, a, a daughter father relationship on, on screen and I felt that was so important for Ray as a character to, like Kylo said, you're, you're looking for these father figures and you're going to be disappointed. I just, I just love that because stereotypically you'd think that it would be, oh, she just wants to find her mom. No, she's going to find, she's, she's trying to find the masculine comfort in all of this and it can't be who she thought it was going to be it has to be ben solo exactly which is just so beautiful well and, and milo get away 
<laughs> is. And that's exactly what we have. Speaking to. of masculine energy. <laughs> Right on cue, Milo. Jeez. Here I am. <laughs> yeah. As he goes, burp, burp. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if we will get backstory on her parents. And if it was something like maybe her mother did not appreciate her, but her father was the one who did. Who knows? With I don't know. Maybe that's me reading so, too much in, into it, but it'd be it'd explain a lot of the the father issues she has. Losing her parents just left such a um, essential part of your childhood to have that mm-hmm. security. And when you think of being protected, protected by the dangers of this world. Not that a mother yeah. cannot protect you, but that's right. more stereotypically put in the father's um, role. Mm-hmm. Is that your daddy yeah. is the one that protects you, protects you from the monsters, and here she is, surrounded by all these aliens. She's on survival mode, even as a yeah. child. She was basically um, put in a very dangerous situation where it was life and death. Every single yeah. day, she wants a father to protect her. She wants a father to tell her that she's safe and that everything is going to be okay. And I wonder mm-hmm. if it's the masculine voice that she hears. I'll come back for you, sweetheart. So she thinks it's her father seeking her out. I can't remember where I saw this. Might have been on Twitter. But it gave a very interesting perspective on the world between worlds. It's this is this is a kind of tangent right now. But now that you said that, it kind of stoked my memory about this. But they said, is it could it happen where the voices that they heard, like Ray uh hearing, I'll come back for you, sweetheart. Um you know, that whole thing is where Kylo or Ben is in the world between worlds and he's seen her past and he speaks as he sees her past, like as she's a child crouched in front of her wall. And he says, I'll come back for you, sweetheart. I will like, I'll come back for you. And that message through the world between worlds traveled through time back to her. So it gave her hope and she heard it. Well, any Raylo itself can travel through time and space. You see that with the finger touching scene. Because Raylo is connected and it's so connected that Ben is able to move through time and space. It wouldn't surprise me if his voice can move time and space where she hears it as a little girl. So yeah, it could be world between the worlds or it could just be the force itself moving and giving her hope. That there's someone mm-hmm. that will care for her and listen to her. I also, like, once this person said this to me, I was thinking, oh my God, what if the whispers are her seeing her journey, like, go through this whole thing in the force, like, in the world between worlds? And she's the one who's going, it's Ben, it's Ben. And, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. I mean, wouldn't that just be gnarly? Where she sees this whole thing flash in the world between worlds and she's just sitting there crying and, and, and Maz is going, uh, you know, blah, 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 whatever she says. Uh, and then Ray goes, it's bad. Oh, it's oh, bad. oh, Luthien, Luthien, Luthien. This connects <laughs> the theory that I had that she experiences the reason that they're collecting the artifacts is they need Ray to touch them. And when she touches them, she experiences the world between worlds. Like it's a portal. Oh my God. My whole body's tingling. My whole body. My whole body's tingling. I can't handle it. So like when she. I can't handle it right now. She also hears, I'll come back for you, sweetheart. Well, and she's the one to say, you know, (coughs) Ray is walking towards the tree. Ray is walking towards the Unetti tree and she's yelling to herself, save Ben Solo. Yes. Save 
Ben Solo. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a price.